Hi everyone, I'm Lars Zimmermann and I work as an engineer in the custom development platform team at Rewe Digital. We are building an internal platform for our engineering teams and today we would like to show you the journey of our platform and how we manage thousands of artifact repositories inside our platform today. So let's get right into it. The agenda for today is first of all a quick overview about Rewe Digital. Then we will talk about where our platform journey started. We will then talk about the challenges that we face when building out our platform and how we moved away from one large container artifact repository. Finally, we will summarize and share some of our key learnings. So first of all, let's start with some words about Rewe Digital. We are a subsidiary company of the Rewe Group, which is specialized in the retail and tourism sector. We originally started here in Germany, but are now operating all across Europe with around 15,000 stores and agencies and around 384,000 employees. We as Rewe Digital in particular are responsible for all of the digital services inside the Rewe Group and are proudly developing digital innovations. Currently, we are around 2,200 colleagues spanning across nine different development locations. We create roughly 1 billion data records on a daily basis from services like our self-checkouts, scan and go services inside the markets, the different mobile apps we have, or our online delivery services, and many, many more. So how did we start our platform journey? For that, it's important to understand where we came from. With the long history of our company, we are always trying to modernize our infrastructure. At the time when our platform journey started, the term platform engineering wasn't really a thing. And we had many monolithic applications, which were normally deployed to some virtual machines. Therefore, our infrastructure included manual tasks, which were mainly handled with tickets at that time. Therefore, we aim to modernize not only our infrastructure, but also our approach. We updated our goal architecture as well as restructured our teams to have more self-autonomy and therefore the need for self-service of infrastructure was born. With this in mind, we had a clear goal for our new platform. To name some of them here, we wanted a golden path for our developers, but without actually creating a golden cage. We also wanted to reduce and abstract the complexity of our infrastructure so that developers can use it to their full potential without needing to know all the ins and outs about the infrastructure. We also wanted strong isolations in our platform so that we have really, really high security standards and best practices in our platform. And this were only some of our goals with the new platform. So as we started along with our platform journey, we quickly realized some challenges. First of all, we had a really large user base inside the company already and had really large interest into our new platform from the beginning on. on. We obviously had infrastructure that was also already in place, so we needed to migrate a lot and could not just build a new shiny greenfield environment. We had many more challenges in the process, but today we especially want to focus on a mono container repository called Docker Local. This was a container repository that was previously created as a temporary solution. And as many other temporary solutions, it quickly became a mess. To give you an example, on this repository, you could pull container images unauthenticated from inside our company network. There were no clear audit trails anymore. We even saw deployments over this repository. It quickly exploded in size. And in the worst case, teams could overwrite the images or overwrite the tags. And overall, it was just a mess. It quickly became clear that we needed a better solution and that quickly. So the good thing is that with this Docker local repository, we actually saw everything that we didn't want anymore. We didn't want any unauthenticated read access. We didn't want any read access that should not require any authentication. So the user should always be authenticated before pulling images. 
we also wanted a clear audit trail again and a clear ownership of artifacts. So how did we solve this issue? Yeah, with uh, automation. At the time, we were already building our internal platform tool called the Engineering Service Configurator, ESC for short. It is a tool built with Python and is our main self-service infrastructure tool. Every team gets its own file, which describes their currently provisioned infrastructure, and they can then create merge requests to provision new or update existing uh, infrastructure. Our own tooling here also allows us to implement stuff and logic that is specific to our organization, for example, for billing purposes. We won't go into details on how the tool actually works, as this would easily be a talk in itself. But let's try to look at an example. Here on the right, we have really, uh, really stripped down version of an example team and their infrastructure file which in this case is just called team01. You see that we store some metadata about every team as well as the developers that are on that team for access control. And the team can then decide what infrastructure they actually need. Every service inside of our platform gets its own block. And this is also how we managed to solve our infrastructure problem. In the highlighted section, you can see a block for our repository management. In our platform tool, we created an abstraction layer that could create repositories for the teams depending on their infrastructure file. This way, every team can have their clearly isolated repository and we can control the infrastructure behind this abstraction, include best practices or even different settings that the teams do not need to worry about. They can also use different templates to reduce the duplication inside of these files. For example, if they need an external repository as a cache or if they need a repository that should be private or public. But keep in mind that even though we are using the keyword public here, you still need to authenticate before pulling images from this repository. So if a team wants a new repository, they can just create a merge request, for example, for a new repository called apps. And as soon as this is merged to the main branch, our platform tool will create this repository. In this case, the apps repository will be called team01 minus docker minus apps. And will in this case only be visible to the team itself as it's marked as private. So with every of our platform services together in one huge file, we get one huge benefit. Let's take a look at a typical software lifecycle of a software application. We go from development over to integration to storing some software artifacts. And these software artifacts are then later deployed. And normally, you have some day two operations. If a team now wants a container repository and they probably want to store the artifact, they are at this step right here, right? However, inside our platform, we also have information on where they will produce this artifact, which is here. And we also have information on where they will probably want to deploy it. So this step right here. With all of this information available to us, we can now show the real magic of platform engineering. If a team wants a container repository, we do not only create that repository, but we also integrate it for that team. So what do we mean by that? We know which GitLab groups belongs to that team, right? So we can automatically create access tokens inside of their GitLab group as CICD variables. This variable can then be used by CI templates to push to that repository, which we also provide. We also create Docker auth uh, configs for the GitLab group so the team can use this repository inside of their CI or CD jobs. But we know one more thing, right? We also know where they're probably going to deploy stuff from this repository. So we know which namespaces belongs to that team, right? So we can just deploy image pool secrets for this container repository automatically inside of their namespaces. This has not only drastically reduced the numbers of image pool backoff errors that we see, but also has reduced the time that teams need to integrate new repositories.
So how do our artifact repositories look now? Teams can create as many repositories as they like. They can use our self-service and create repositories on their own. We, on the other hand, can implement security best practices. We don't have any unauthenticated access anymore, which also comes along with a clear audit trail. We can even rotate access tokens for the teams, which we do. We rotate access tokens to the repository every six hours, and these tokens are then valid for 24 hours. We also now have a clear golden path for developers, which the corresponding CI templates and deployment templates make it really easy to integrate. With all of these learnings we had, we also adopted these learnings to our build artifact repositories, for example, like our Maven repositories, our NPM repositories. So every repository will get the same treatment. Now let's quickly look at some numbers at our, on our platform. On our current platform, we have around 160 teams, which correlates to around 160 developers which make use of our around 2,000 repositories. And these repositories are all managed over our platform. Our self-service repository is also very popular with around 6,500 commits on it. Yeah, and before we finish, let's quickly reflect on some key learnings and insights that we gather throughout our platform journey. First of all, is that end-to-end -end integration is where platform engineering can really show its magic. If you think about the use case that the team is trying to solve and your platform is actually solving that use case and not only provisioning some infrastructure, you can really reduce the time and effort that teams need to get up to speed with your platform. Also try not only to think about the infrastructure itself, but also try to think about how it's used and how teams are actually going to use it. Another thing is that look at your different platform services for improvements. Also, your older stuff that you might implemented in the past. Maybe you have some improvements that you can make with the new shiny stuff that you implemented just recently. There are always some nice opportunities to be had. So, and another use case is that finding the right abstraction can be really hard, but also really beneficial. With abstraction, it, you can easily run at the risk of creating a golden cage for your teams. Because for us, it's very important that we don't do that. We want to enable the teams that they can use our infrastructure and we don't want to restrict them. The, platform should not hinder teams that maybe want to use some parts of our platform, but maybe want other solutions and want their, build their own stuff for some other parts of it. Also, the right abstraction can really reduce vendor login. This also goes along with deprecation or migration of different parts and services of your platform in the background. With the age of our platform, we realized that there will always be, or there will always come a time where you need to migrate some parts of your platform. And having the right abstraction in the first place will make stuff a lot easier for you, but also for the teams on your platform. So with all of this out of the way, there's only one thing to say. Um, so thank you for listening. If you have any questions, I will be around in the Slack channels and you can always reach me over on GitHub. So thanks.